Sometimes, mixing things together can produce really good results. Other times, not so much. In today's video, we'll be looking at what would happen if you mix Linux with FreeBSD, Core Tools, and Userland. Right, we're booting up on the usual test machine. It's an Optiplex 760, 8GB of RAM, and an NVIDIA 710 video card. And the first thing we notice is the boot screen, and it's unusual because it gives you a lot of choices. You can either boot straight from the USB stick, from RAM, you can force X11, and console only. The first two options actually boot into Wayland, and we'll just do the default from the actual USB stick. It's Chimera and Chimera for root and a non. You have to wait a little bit. It does automatically boot in. And there we go. And so we just enter Chimera. I'm not the world's greatest fan of uh, the GNOME desktop. Not as it is now. GNOME 2, GNOME 1 and GNOME 2 was, was decent. GNOME 3, not so much. And uh, GNOME 4, I don't really use at all. But we'll have a look around. So activities will uh, reveal a nice little well, a little uh, dock at the bottom where the applications live. There's not a great deal already uh, installed. It's just the basics, I think. I assume this is what you get as default for norm. Uh, you've got calendar and clock and the two connected audio and power. We'll look at the settings. And we, okay, well, let's uh, know where to close it. Anyway, down that way. Okay, we'll just have a look down here. I'll look at the about device name, memory, processor, graphics. Yeah, the best things norm 42.0 and Wayland as the windowing system. And the network thing isn't working. Please contact. Okay. Well, there's Bluetooth. Um, oh, interesting. Well, look at the backgrounds. And yeah, I mean, they're different. I'll give it that. Right. I'm going to try and navigate way around this. I'm not used to this particular desktop. And we'll have a look at the uh, home directory. There's really nothing in there, of course. it has been a live session uh, OS at the moment. There doesn't seem to be a way that you can install it. We'll have a look at, look at the web. Well, a few things that we can look at, so that's pre-installed. Welcome to the web. Well, okay, that's very nice. Thank you very much. And seeing as we're here, we might as well go to the Chimera website itself. And there we go. You know, it's uh, fairly simple in layout. It's uh, gets to the point, as I suppose. Alternative user land. It's not GNU Linux. It's user land tools based on FreeBSD, LLVM, and uh, the toolchain associated. And if we just scroll down, uh, we see a little notification. It says the distribution is in heavy development. Right now it is a relatively complete graphical system with a multimedia stack and a web browser capable of running Wayland and X11 environments such as GNOME and Enlightenment. However, it is still source based, meaning you have to compile everything yourself and undergoes frequent refactoring. So it is not yet safe to use. Okay, so it's definitely not a finished product. Right, yes. Okay, and the last update was May the 19th uh, in the news section. Uh, this part just lists out what the uh, the core tools, the tool chain is that it's using from FreeBSD. Chimera comes with a novel user land setup based on FreeBSD core tools, replacing core tools itself from Linux and related projects like Find Utils and Diff Utils, Set and Grep. The FreeBS tools were chosen for the high quality code, 
well, yes, uh, we all know that, and solid feature set. Some source code is also taken from NetBSD and OpenBSD. Oh, okie dokie. This means that Chimera is not a GNU slash Linux system. While this is debatable for certain other distributions as well, uh, e.g. Uh, Alpine, I'll take the word for it, I don't know if used it. They typically tend to still use the GNU compiler and other things. So yes, it gives you a brief rundown on this page of the philosophy and the technical aspects of the OS. I mean, it does look interesting uh, if you're into development, I suppose. I don't know what big difference it would make for the end user. I don't suppose anything will be different in that respect. So uh, yeah, okay. So next we will have a look at, uh, I'm really not used to this interface. We'll get terminal going. And we're just going to have a look at, as all Linux users like to do, we'll have a look at the kernel, which is 5.15.34. Does it mean anything to me? I don't know if that's the latest. Right, we're going to have a look at uh, the installation instructions and uh, if you want to put it onto a hard drive. And keep in mind that these images are provided for preview purposes and installation is currently officially unsupported. But it does give you a seemingly comprehensive instruction set how to do it. Which uh, is, I mean, I'm not lazy, but that looks way too much just to uh, install. I think I'll just keep it running as a live image. Right, and we're going to have a look at how we can install something else to use, because really there's not a lot in the base install as it is to get a feel of the OS. I know it uses APK, and I think by looking at the instructions, if we do APK update to fetch the latest... Uh, Repository list. Okay, it's 963 distinct packages available. And if we search, we should be able to see what uh, was well, for instance, Firefox. It doesn't come up with anything. Okay, so maybe they haven't got Firefox on that. Okay, we'll have a look at APK list. And these are all the installed applications, etc. And we'll see if it's. Uh, actually install somewhere. No, there's nothing listed with Fire or Firefox. Nope. So it doesn't look like we're going to get some Firefox going. Another search for Libra. Let's have a look at the instructions again, I think. So it's not install, it's, uh, is it fetch? I am not used to this particular way of doing things, so you have to bear with me. Those who are will be pulling their hair out and uh, going mad. So, APK fetch Firefox, no. Right, okay, so, um, yeah, <laughs> it does limit what we can do. I don't know what range of uh, software is available for Chimera. Let's have a look at well, APK search. Browser, generic word. No, it's not, it's not comes up for that. Our options are limited. I know this is only early development, I suppose, but um, I don't know. Well, Chimera Linux. It's an interesting idea. Uh, there has been not similar, but almost similar attempts previously to stick together FreeBSD and Linux. I think you had a, a version of Debian a few years back that had the FreeBSD kernel rather than the Linux one, and then they had the all the Debian stuff around it. Uh, I never did try that. I think they discontinued it. And this takes the slightly different approach. It has a Linux kernel with some of the FreeBSD stuff uh, around it. Well, it doesn't have everything, of course. Uh, there are some commands and some applications and tools which are not there. 
I mean, I don't suppose they could show everything in, otherwise then it becomes FreeBSD. But one of the things that disappointed me was the installation in onto a hard drive is uh, well, it's overly complicated. Really, you don't want to be going down that route just for a simple test. There seems to be hardly anything already pre-installed, which they could have done. And really, if you wanted to install something else, there really seems to be nothing available. I mean, everything seems to be source-based install, uh, and that goes for upgrading the OS itself. So, I don't know. It's certainly not user-friendly. Um, saying that, it could be used as a live uh, live session OS. It's not persistent like uh, Nomad BSD, you know, where you can uh, fire it up on a USB stick, get some work done, save it, close down and take it to another machine and the work they've already done is still on the stick. You can't do that. This is more like, like the uh, the Ghost BSD way of being a live session. You, It's once you've logged off any work that you've done unless you've saved it to an external device or printed it, it's gone. So I, it, to me, I don't know what's the purpose of this other than an experiment, I suppose. I suppose it could act as a gateway uh, for developers who are used to Linux perhaps to get into FreeBSD and maybe develop. I don't know how many of the tool sets or what would translate. I have no idea. I think in that respect, it may be better just to boot into FreeBSD or have GhostBSD if you wanted a graphical environment. It's, uh, I, I don't know. Or maybe you could just develop on Linux and then just port it over. I, I have no idea. So yeah, it's for, for me as an end user... Well, it's just yet another Linux distribution, an unfinished one or one that's in heavy development. And depending on the uh, size of the development team, it may be just one person or maybe just a couple. Will it ever get finished or will it get abandoned halfway through? I mean, these things tend to happen with these uh, independent projects. But we'll see. I'll keep an eye on it. I don't think it's something that I'm going to be using, definitely. I mean, I... I only use FreeBSD, but it's uh, something which has been mentioned to me by a few subscribers, and uh, I thought I'd have a look. And well, frankly, it's uh, I'm a little, I feel a little bit underwhelmed. But then again, it's only early days for it, so um, I don't want to be too unkind. So if I was to give it a score, and this is slightly unfair because, like I say, it's an unfinished product. I usually wait until you get a release candidate, you know, a third one, and it's practically the same thing that's going to be released. But if I was to give it a score, I would give it two out of five and the reason for that uh, is that it's something unique it could possibly be used for easing developers into bsd and it's a chance for them to do something their own way um independent of anyone else which is always a good thing in the uh, linux world because there seems to be far too many clones and uh, direct derivatives uh, which only ever change something small like wallpaper or icons and then call it a new os which it really isn't the uh, downside well it's unfinished um and that's for sure it seems to be unfocused they they know what they want to do technically and uh kind of like uh morally or ethically but there doesn't seem to be an end goal there, there doesn't seem to be a, a purpose for its uh for its being or raison d'etre solo or very small dev team which probably means that they haven't got resources or this the ability to develop quickly which means that the the rest of the world moves on and they appear to be withering on the vine it may not be the case, of course, but that's what it could look like. And the Linux world is a very competitive one in terms of distributions that come and go. And if you look like you're not progressing, then maybe you just fared. Especially fared from the public consciousness, which is never a good thing. You might as well use GhostBSD if you want a uh, an easy gateway into FreeBSD as a developer or as a user. Or even NomadBSD. Both of them will give you a graphical environment with all the full set of FreeBSD uh, tools and tool chains etc there and uh, I think that's that's primarily the reason for them being there anyway thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time this and every other video on my channel has been made using FreeBSD and open source software